Number 63. A precision laboratory resistor is made of a coil of wire 1.5 centimeters in diameter and 4 centimeters long, and it has 500 turns. Letter A. What is its self-inductance? So this basically right here is describing a solenoid, and we have a formula for self-inductance of a solenoid. It is as follows. That the self-inductance of a solenoid will equal the permeability of free space multiplied by the number of turns squared multiplied by the cross-sectional area of that solenoid, divided then by the length of the solenoid. All right, so in order to find this out, we basically just simply have to plug in, right? The permeability of free space is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th. The number of turns they told us was 500, so throw in the 500 and square it, okay? Calculate the area then, the cross-sectional area. So they said um, it is a made of a coil of wire 1.5 centimeters in diameter. So I have to assume that that is the uh, actual like cross-sectional area of the solenoid. Um, if it is simply the um, the actual wires diameter, then I can't solve it, okay? So we have to make that assumption. Um, so this is gonna be pi times r squared. They gave you the diameter, so you know the radius is half of that diameter, so divide that in half. And then this is in centimeters, but we need that in meters, so take that and multiply it by 10 to the minus two. Don't forget to square it. And then divide it by the length. That has to be in meters. I told you it's four centimeters long, so simply take that and multiply it by 10 to the minus two. And here we go, right? So nice long calculation. So this is going to be, all right, so it's four pi times times 10 to the minus seventh. And that's then going to be times 500 squared. And then it's going to be times pi multiplied then by 0.75 times 10 to the minus two squared divided then by <clears throat> four times 10, four times 10 to the minus two. All right, so that works out to be about 1.39 or so. So this is uh, 1.39 times 10 to the minus, that looks like three Henry's, okay? Or about 1.39 milli Henry, but that's, that takes care of that one. All right, fairly relatively uh, straightforward, I believe. So this is going to be letter A. Let's take a look at letter B. What average EMF is induced if the 20 amp current through it is turned on in five milliseconds, which is one fourth of a blah, 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 blah. Extra information that is just noise, all right? So it's asking, what is the average EMF induced? Okay, now it's like, ooh, average, but no, 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 same formulas, all right? This is essentially, this is the average EMF induced formula, okay? So EMF is gonna be equal to the inductance multiplied by the change in current divided by the change in time over which the current is changing. So the induced EMF here, I got rid of the negative sign, but I explained that in the past 17 problems. So I think I'm just gonna move forward. And uh, the inductance here is now going to be uh, what we just calculated over here. This is gonna be the 1.39 times 10 to the minus three. The current here is gonna be 12 amps and you know, uh, it's turned on, it's, so it must've started at zero and it's gonna reach 12. So that's 12 in the numerator divided them by the time over which it took to change that current. They told you it was, five milliseconds, you know we need that in seconds, so simply take that and multiply it by 10 to the minus three. And voila, here it is, right? So there's gonna be our answer from before, multiplied by 12, all divided then by five times 10 to the minus three. And we get about 3.33, all right? 3.33, and that's in terms of volts, all right? Negative sign just implies direction, we're just calculating magnitude here. So. Letter C, uh, what is its inductance if it is shortened to half its length and counterwound, okay? Um, meaning two layers of 250 turns in opposite directions. So, you know, if you had, you know, two coils now, pretend you had two coils, right? And this goes way back, okay? And pretend that this other one that I'm gonna draw is counterwound, all right? Then what's happening here is that the, let's just say, it depends on the current's direction, but this is this is a review of the last chapter. So let's just pretend, we know that through a solenoid there is some magnetic field, right? So what happens here is that the magnetic field traveling through, let's say this solenoid, uh, will be opposite to the magnetic field traveling through this solenoid because, or that part of the solenoid, because they are, they are counterwound, all right? So since this net, and since they're equal now, 250 turns equally, 
um, the magnetic field there is zero. They just cancel. If there's no magnetic field, there's no inductance, right? There's no changing. That's that's how wires, that's how we induce certain EMFs, all right, by uh, changing the magnetic field, all right? That's how, like, two wires, quote-unquote, communicate with one another. How does changes in this wire affect changes in the other wire? Well, it's simply by changes in the magnetic field that surround this wire, because that's what this wire experiences. It ex this wire will experience the changing magnetic field, all right, as a result of maybe changing currents in that wire. That's the whole idea, all right? So, uh, you know, the current here doesn't, this doesn't experience the current. <laughs> right? The current is simply flowing through the wire, but the magnetic field is, 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 is a field that is created around this particular coil. All right, and it's felt by the other one. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully that helps. All right, if it does, you know what to do. Check out some more of our videos too. We got math and chem, We've got other stuff coming as well. And uh, even if you're not using OpenStax books, they are free. Download them, find identical or very similar questions, and you'll have all your problems solved. Guys, thank you very much. Take care.